everybody. This is Joseph P. Farrell, and we are here for part four of the news and views from the Nefarium for February 19th. I didn't expect I'd be back, but uh, I had a Facebook friend by the name of Dr. Jaime Paredes who clued me in about an article that I'll be reading from. I'll post the link here on this uh, YouTube video so that you can kind of follow along but that's why I'm wearing my glasses so pardon the glare because I can't see without my glasses so let me read this to you because I find this very interesting <coughs> excuse me the article says Chinese say they're building impossible space drive <coughs> excuse me and it goes on to say this Chinese researchers claim they've confirmed the theory behind an impossible space drive and are proceeding to build a demonstration version. If they're right, this might transform the economics of satellites, open up new possibilities <coughs> excuse me, for space exploration, and give the Chinese a decisive military advantage in space. To say that the EM drive, short for electromagnetic drive, is controversial would be an understatement. According to Roger Shawyer, the British scientist who developed the concept, the drive converts electrical energy into thrust via microwaves without violating any of the laws of physics. <coughs> Many researchers believe otherwise. An article about M drive in New Scientist magazine drew a volley of criticism. Scientists not only argued that Scheuer's work was blatantly impossible, but that his reasoning was flawed. They also said the article should never have been published, unquote. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, uh, I find that interesting because, first of all, this article is two years old. It was first posted on September 24th, 2008. And what interests me is not so much the claim to the science behind it, but the dynamic that you see going on in the article. Because I want you to, to stop and just assume, for the sake of argument, that the technology being described here, this microwave space propulsion device, I want you to assume that the technology is valid, that it actually exists. Now, in point of fact, it does actually exist because I just posted a paper on the website in my members only area describing some of this technology, which incidentally, and here comes the curveball, dates from the 1950s. All right. So now let's look at this again. We have a claim by communist China that they're de developing this electromagnetic space drive based on microwaves. We have a counterclaim published in New Scientist magazine, which is one of the standard scientific organs, media organs, of the Western scientific establishment, saying, no, it doesn't exist, the physics is flawed, the reasoning is flawed, and the article should never have been published, all right? So in other words, you got all the standard responses of scientists and engineers to something that falls outside of their way of thinking, their, their model. What really interests me here and again, uh, Dr. Jaime Paredes, thank you for bringing this article to my attention. I thought everybody should know about it, so that's why I'm sharing this. What's really interesting here, I think, is the other dynamic that's going on. Because here you have communist China sending, if this technology is valid, sending a very clear message. And the message is twofold. Number one, we're not going to play by the standard models dictated and laid down by Western science and its media organs. In other words, we're going to be free to think outside the box. But notice this. They're talking openly about a technology that existed and was proposed back in the 1950s and kept classified. All right. Now, that in itself should tell you something, because this goes hand in hand, I think, with the Chinese government's policy of issuing state-issued state, state issued money that's debt-free. Because remember what I said in Babylon's Banksters. You have essentially two economic policies and you have two views of physics. One view of economic and physical policy is that the system is closed. All right? And the other is that it's open. So China is, in a certain sense, following almost the identical same course that Nazi Germany followed, both in terms of its 
scientific research and in terms of its uh, economic policy. This is a very interesting dynamic, in other words, because China is signaling that it is not going to play ball according to the prescribed set of Western rules. And they're discussing this technology. I mean, my word, you can see that they're even showing you a picture of this alleged technology. So they're saying, we're not playing ball. We're going to open this stuff up and, and talk about it publicly. So if the technology is genuine, the response of New Scientist magazine is also interesting because I think it's a genuine response. But notice that the, the arguments advanced for, for a refutation of this idea is that there are no arguments other than the reasoning is flawed, but we don't know what the flaws are according to this article, which doesn't review the reasons. And number two, the article should never have been published. People should not know about this, in other words. Uh, they shouldn't know about mistakes in reasoning. They shouldn't know about erroneous engineering principles. Let's keep all of that hidden. Well, my thinking is you keep it hidden because there might be something to even erroneous physics principles and even erroneous engineering based on them. So to me, the whole interesting thing here is not so much the claim to the technology, but the underlying dynamic that you kind of feel going on in this article. It's, it's very, very intriguing to me that you've got China saying this and you've got the West saying that, isn't it? So anyway, I want to thank uh, my Facebook friend, Dr. Jaime Paredes, for bringing that to my attention. It is an old article, and I do believe that uh, Richard Hoagland commented on this precise thing at some point in the last year or so. But it is an interesting article, and it's an interesting dynamic, and that's what really grabbed me with that article. And as I say, I do talk very briefly, and I'm planning to talk more in the members only area papers on some of these technologies and some of these implications because they're very very profound and we're seeing a little bit of it in this article. Now before I sign off on this uh, unexpected part four extempore news and views from the nefarium I also want to mention that Daniel and I have been talking about doing more videos such as the members only area uh, members have seen uh, that 17 part video interview. We're planning to do more of that sort of thing. We're trying to get some of the technological bugs worked out in addition to doing those video text chats that, that we've planned for the next couple of months. So I wanted everybody to know that and to bear with me. I have posted uh, just today a couple of more papers in the members only area, some very short papers on some technological and uh, hidden history things that I think might be of interest to the members. So anyway, that's the news and views part four from the Nefarium for February 19th, 2011. I'm Joseph P. Farrell, and I will see you all on the flip side. Bye-bye.